All right, everybody, it's time for another one of these, and it's a good time to make another Mariners video because it feels like we've hit gut check time, which I know might sound a little bit weird, but I think it's true. I think this is a gut check moment for this Mariners team where we find out if they're really going to fight for this or not. Because even though the team is still well in first place in the AL West, still six games up, it really, really doesn't feel like that right now. It just doesn't, because five days ago, it was a 10-game lead. And life was good. We were about to play a three-game series in Florida against the Marlins, one of the worst teams in baseball. And our division rivals were dealing with some of the best teams in the league. It felt like this was the moment where we were going to just blow it up. And it didn't happen. Not only, not only did things not go so well in Florida. And by the way, our road trip in Florida is only halfway over. Um, Houston has decided to catch fire here. And now we're just watching them wondering how did this happen so quickly? Like we had a 10 game lead. Now it's a six game lead and it feels like a two game lead. So even though we're still well in first place, even though things are still good, we've got 45 wins at the 80 game mark. That's a good result. We're still looking good overall. This feels like a moment where it could all go wrong. It could really go wrong. And if it does, I I don't really know what to expect. Some of these teams in our division, uh, really when I say that, I really just mean Houston and Texas. They're getting some players back. So nothing's guaranteed yet. So if the team doesn't respond the right way with these games against Tampa and then the following um, home, home series is, then it can slip away really quickly. We do have a relatively easy schedule the rest of the season, so we can make up for it later, but I really would rather not let it come to that. So let's let's try to talk about the Mariners right now, and let's try to find the right tone. Because on the one hand, the team is six games up in the division. They're 45 and 35, 10 games above 500. On the other hand, it's like we're not feeling as good right now as we should, because the last, well, not even week, but close to week, has really not gone the way we needed it to go overall. Needed to win four games, we won two. Maybe three would have been okay, but we didn't get there. We won two. So, quite simply, we need to fire another coach, I guess, because the offense has regressed to... Brent Brant Brown levels of incompetence. It, offense is just not good enough. And the degree to which people in this lineup are slump, uh, the degree to which this lineup is slumping is, I don't know how to fix it. I don't have a solution here. But it's the guys who are, we're supposed to be able to count on. Julio, every time this year, it seems like he's about to snap out of his funk and go on a tear, he just falls right back in. Just falls right back in. He's on pace to hit 12 home runs this year. I'm sorry, 14. Th that's ridiculous. That's insane that a guy with his power, who got invited to the home run derby two years in a row, is going to end up with less than 15 home runs on the year if he keeps this up. He got a day off on Saturday. Goes out there on Sunday. Gets to face... A triple A pitcher, a not a good pitcher, and he goes 0 for 5. Cal, Cal's done nothing like this whole month almost, except for the walk off grand slam. He's completely gone to sleep at the plate. And that one, I think I know what happened, but it's still happening. It doesn't really matter why. JP Crawford, ugly at bats overall. Dylan Moore, falling off a cliff. Hanniger doesn't do anything anymore. Like, you're trying to find guys on this team that are swinging a good bat right now. It's, um, I guess, Luke. Luke's the main guy. Garver's playing a lot better lately at the plate. Canzone's actually done some good th stuff, although I'll tell you, there's some really ugly stuff with Canzone, too. 
and of course Bliss. And how sad is it that Ryan Bliss, some kid we called up from AAA as an injury replacement, who is absolutely not supposed to be carrying anything right now, is actually kind of carrying things. It, it almost feels like that, right? You almost feel better when Ryan Bliss goes up to the plate than you do Cal Rally or Ty France or J.P. Crawford. And that's just so backwards. So the whole lineup has just kind of gone to sleep. So it's hard for me to find somebody to blame anymore. It's hard for me to figure out a way out of it. And I can't go to the conventional things, right? Because usually this is the time of year where Mariners fans start talking about how the ownership is cheap and isn't going to spend the money. But how is that the solution? Like, how is spending more money going to make a guy like Julio Rodriguez remember how to swing well? Or how is getting spending more money going to make uh, J.P. Crawford remember how to hit well. Like, these are your guys. These are the guys that you're supposed to depend on. And I know Ty France just came back from injury. I'm not going to rake him through the coals, but he has not been good since he came back. I'm not going to read too much into it, but he he hasn't looked right. And uh, we'll just have to see what goes there, what what plays out there. But even there, it's like, okay, you've got Ty France coming back from an injury, and he he does he's not... He's not getting any results. You've got Tyler Locklear still on the roster who was doing positive things at first base and at the plate when he was there for Ty France during the injury. Why not, I don't know, give Locklear some time, give him some opportunities to do stuff out there, put him out there for a couple of starts, maybe some late game pinch hit opportunities. Like, since France came back, Locklear's basically not been on the team, but he is on the team. So you've got management issues in there as well. and It's it's not about like, oh, we should have gone and spent money on this guy. We should have gone and spent money on that guy. There are guys on this team who we depend on, who need to play competently. And in the case of Cal and the case of Hanniger, I totally get it. Because we used them too much. And now they're gassed. We played them way too much. They've been playing way too much baseball so far this year. It was super predictable that this would happen. Cal, just because he's a catcher. And this is how catchers go. Hanniger, because he's old and injury prone. But you play those guys way too much. And you get what you get. Cal is literally sitting on an ops plus of 90. And Hanniger... Like, like, Cal, I kind of get because he's still really good behind the plate. He's still a really good catcher defensively. And you don't really have a great secondary solution. I understand that. But Hanniger, how did you not see this coming? How did you not know that he's supposed to be playing four times a week? Now it might be too late. He might just be shot. You played him too much. And he, right now, is genuinely like a zero-tool player. He's a zero-tool player. He doesn't do anything well. No speed, not good in the field, can't hit for power, can't hit for contact. Nothing's really there. I guess maybe his arm, but who? how often does that really come into play? Not that often. So you've already kind of blown that. And it, I don't know what the way out is. So quite simply, the players that we have need to start playing better for this to matter at all. Blanco's going to come back soon. We need him to spring to life really, really badly. We need a lot of players to spring to life here, right? Like, a guy like Julio has no excuse to be this bad. A guy like Julio has no excuse to be this lackluster. Crawford, he, he actually got an extended period of time off for the injury. He's got no excuse to be this bad at the plate. Cal, again, I get it. France, I kind of get it. France was playing well before he got hurt, by the way, so... I'm not really dogging on France too much right now. He's kind of worked his way back in. Uh, Garver, I, th I think, has put together some really good at-bats lately. And and guys like Dylan Moore, obviously Dylan Moore has really fall fallen off lately, and we need to ease up on our expectations with Dylan Moore. But at the same time, it's like you shouldn't be leaning on Dylan Moore to carry your offense. The guys on this team who should be carrying the offense are named Julio, JP, Cal, Ty, maybe Mitch Garver. There's nobody in there named Dylan Moore. 
Hanzone should be a part-time player that you just lean on for a little bit of power and um, just kind of a half-decent defensive outfielder. Like, he should not be the focal point of your team. If he's the focal point of your team, you built the team wrong. So, uh, there's some mistakes just being made here. And I'm going to say it again. Everyone's default is to blame ownership. There is a little bit of that going on here. But I'm looking at a lineup right now full of guys who are just slumping all at once and kind of canceling out what the good stuff we're seeing from some of these guys. Like Bliss is playing crazy good. Bliss is doing some really above his head stuff, it feels like. I didn't think he was going to be this good. I don't think anybody did. And we're not getting as much as we should out of it because all of our supposed stars are slumping at the wrong time. Even uh, Victor, Victor Robles. Victor Robles has actually been good. Not that he's played a ton. It's a tiny sample size. I understand that. But he's been fine. So make that matter. In order for that to matter, we're just going to need our stars to play like stars. And I, I don't know how to put it any other way than that. Like we can talk about trade for this guy. We can talk about trading for that guy. We can do that. It's going to help a little bit. You trade for Luis Robert Jr. and he comes in here and he's really good. Great. But we're not going to get to where we want to get to if the stars on this team don't play like it. And it's not ideal roster construction. I understand that. Where When you go into a season and you're leaning heavily on a guy like Mitch Haniger and Ty France to be competent at the plate, like you kind of already messed up. But even at the top, guys like Julio cannot be playing like this. So that's the offense, and that, that's the main stuff. I mean, if we're being honest, I was really disappointed in Castillo's last start. He had an opportunity to kind of put a little bit of a Band-Aid on a bleeding wound, and he just popped it open. But overall, he's been fine. Gilbert's been lights out his last couple starts, just impossibly good and i know he's not playing great competition but it doesn't really matter we've seen that that, that doesn't necessarily mean anything but look what happened to bryce miller yesterday in uh in miami kirby kirby's been good miller i'm not shocked that he's fallen off to the, to the point now where he's probably like an average pitcher overall this year but um it, it's certainly been frustrating he's got really bad home away splits he's uh got some real limitations with his game and at this point it's hard to really trust him the way we were trusting him earlier this year when he looked like a legitimate ace for a bit there and I'd love to trust Wu but we're clearly not comfortable letting him throw more than like 65 pitches a game so it's just one of those things where things feel very volatile it feels very volatile with this pitching staff right now yeah it's one of the best in the league but um th this this Wu situation threatens to really really blow it up, especially because we don't have a ton of guys in this pen that we really seem to like. There's a very, very limited pool of relievers that we seem to have a lot of faith in right now. It's um, it's Munoz, of course. And then after that, it's like, I like Stanek, but there is a little bit of Fernando Rodney in there. I like Saucedo. Saucedo's numbers this year have actually been really good. But... There's definitely a sense that he's a guy who can be beat. I like Thornton, but I certainly don't love him. I like Voth, but I don't know if he's like high leverage. So this is not a team that can handle a guy like Wu and a guy like Miller. Where Wu, we don't trust him to throw more than 65 pitches. And Miller, who's just starting to kind of randomly blow up and give up a bunch of crap now. We don't have the bullpen to deal with this. And with our offense playing the way that it is, um, it's just, it's not enough. And, like, we, we are putting a lot of eggs in that basket of um, um, Santos. And maybe he'll be back, but it's not going to be for a little while. Who knows what we're going to get out of it. And, again, it's not even really the problem with this team. Is this bullpen losing games for us? Not really. Even like that that White Sox game that we lost in OT, are you really going to say that was the fault of the bullpen? I, I don't think that's fair. All right. all right. That's really all I can say. I know we should be happy right now. I know things are good right now overall. 
I know that being 10 games above 500 is definitely new territory with this team, but the vibes just aren't great right now because we are coming off a stretch where we, I mean, we lost four or five. That's real. Losing four out of five is, is no joke. And we saw some real flaws exposed with this team in that stretch, but it's, it's more than just that. It's not just, oh, we, we've uh, gone on a little bit of a cold streak here. It's, I, I feel like maybe this roster has been mismanaged a little bit where we, it, it, it might be too late. Cal might already be kind of gassed this whole season because we rode him too hard. Haniger, I really think, might be gassed because we rode him too hard. And I don't know what to do. Because while our rotation is still great, uh, it's awesome to have three guys who are not quite aces, but very close to being aces. And then you've got whatever you get with Wu. And then... Uh, I don't want to completely forget what Miller did early this season when he looked like our best pitcher for a little while there, but it's not going to be enough, especially if Houston keeps doing whatever it is they're doing right now. But that's really all I can say. Um, I'm not going to panic yet. There's no point in panicking. I mean, realistically, if Julio's opposite field slap line drive, that would have been a base hit about 65% of the time finds grass and the whatever his name Marlins second baseman doesn't make a remarkable catch we tie that game probably win that game and everybody feels a little bit different right now so those are the margins but it's not really going to matter if we come out of this next stretch of games where we have to play in Tampa and then we have to play some really tough teams at home if we get beat up in that stretch we're going to remember this as the turning point in the season where everything started to kind of go bad. All right. I'll see you guys later. Go Mariners. Um, it's not panic time yet, but it is gut check time. This is the moment where this team needs to show we're actually going to fight for this because the league is going to make us fight for this. They're not going to hand it to us the way it looked like they were going to hand it to us um, a week ago when we had a 10-game lead in the division. All right. See ya.